Hi everyone, welcome to the next section of this video. In the first section of this video, we've looked at what a container is. We've looked at the difference between virtualization and containerization. We've looked at um, what a container image is. We've looked at how to get um, a container image. We've looked at um, the registry. We've also looked at um, we've also looked at the format of um, an image all right so in this lesson we're going to continue with looking at the tools that are used to create and manage containers in linux all right and um one of the tools you can use to create container is the podman tool all right and um if you also want to build a container image you can use the builder tool and you can use the scopio tool to inspect and do other container management activities and you should also know that the podman can actually do more than creating containers but for the scope of this study we're going to use podman to create containers only all right so let's look at how a basic um, linux container works all right so um a container leverage on the kernel all right like we've said i said a container is um, an isolated instance it's a running instance that is isolated from the operating system all right so and the way it is isolated from the operating system is that it leverages on the key components of the operating system all right mm -hmm. so for example a container will leverage on the kernel and another key component um the container will leverage on is the s linux which is used to protect the container processes from each other and from the host machine all right so the container will also leverage on the namespace and the c group and the um sec comp all right so for the um, namespaces those are used to make the isolation of resources and containers possible, all right? So it isolates the containers from each other and from um, the container host. While the C groups, that is the control groups, on the other hand, manages the system resources and it regulates containers from using up the resources on the host, all right? So from this image you can see the container running in an isolated environment which is different from the host operating system so you can see the container in a different namespace which has its own binaries and libraries and you can see the host operating system on a different namespace which is with its own binaries and libraries so the service sees that that is going to be running on the container is going to be different from the services that is going to be running on the container host and you can do that by um, just doing ps ef that's just to check the processes running here so they're going to have um, different processes they're also going to have different um, um, names you know because they have different um, libraries so this here depicts that a container of course may need um, a storage device depending on how the image was built all right so for example um, if the container needs a storage device, we, need, we would need to attach the storage from the container host to the container, and that's why I seen this array here. All right. So, for example, if the mount point is var www, it's going to be attached to the container, and and also um, a port on the host might need to be forwarded to the container. Of course, it will have to be forwarded to the container. So, for example, if this container is um, an Apache uh, web server, and there is a user somewhere there that needs to um talk to this service all right so um the the the, the user can talk to this service by um using this port all right so this port on the host is going to be forwarded to the container so whenever the this user um calls this service via the port all right so the port on the host is going to be forwarded to the container so the user can be able to talk to the container all right so um what else do we need to talk about here so this is a summary of all of what we've been saying that creating a containers requires logging in into the registry which we've ascertained that so we need to log in into the registry download the container image all right and then create the container so that's the summary of um everything that we have been saying all right and before we can create the containers we need to install the module that the con that that contains the container utilities okay so um we need a tool all right to um, manage containers and we need to install that module that contains the, the tools and the module is um container tools and to install that we need we need to do your module install container tools all right so this is 
how we're going to install the container tools module in Linux. And to log in into the image registry, we use the, of course, we've talked about the podman command. We do podman login registry dot dot io. So this is the registry, all right. And to log in, we just use the command podman login and we put in our username and password. And then we need to download the container image, just like we've said. To download the container image, we use the command podman pull followed by the registry name followed by the registry username and the image name and the tag and i said that if you don't specify a tag of course the, lat the latest tag will be used all right and then we can run the container by using the command podman run dash dash name the container name all right so these are all of um, the activities that we're going to be um doing in the next video which is the action time all right so this is a way you can start stop um restart a container this is how you can search for a container image in linux this is how you can search for image image tags in linux all right so uh, most of these activities are what we're going to be doing in the next video which is the action time which is the step-by-step -step guide of how to create a basic container in linux and we're going to be doing that with an example so in the next video um we're going to do this example we're going to see how to create containers how to you know download a, an image all right and how to do um um, manage container the basic management of um, containers in linux all right so um thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also if you're writing the rhcsa 8 exam you can just come to this website i'll be dropping the link to this website in the description section below all right and click on the um, rhcsa 8 exam practice questions we have enough questions more than 100 questions but we've been solving it bit by bit so it's better you solve as much as possible before you write the exam and i can guarantee you that when you do that you're of course going to pass the exam so thank you once more bye for now